Hi everybody, it's Broom Broom Zoom and my name is Andrew and welcome to another amazing video. This time I'm here with my super disgustingly dirty, somewhat aged looking for a couple of months old motorcycle. So this is of course the Kawasaki Versys X300. Uh, I've done a few videos about it, but I haven't actually really told you much about this bike yet. I've done a walk around and a couple of things, but now it's time to give you a couple more extra thoughts. Oh yeah, she's dirty. And you know what? It's dirty for a reason. And that is because I specifically bought this bike to dip my feet into a little bit of off-roading. So I've been on a couple of rides now and she is in fact quite disgusting. And there's a few bits of rust here and there on the bike. And of course, that's going to definitely happen when you take the bike off-road uh, to the beach. And uh, yeah, so I, I, I don't know whether it was a good idea. Yeah, no, it wasn't a good idea. <laughs> but my first off-road adventure on this bike was to Double Island Point um, up here on the Sunshine Coast. And mm, all right, so what I did was I watched a whole bunch of YouTube videos about riding motorcycles on the sand and... From what I can see, it's not the favorite pastime of many motorcyclists, and now I know why. So, riding on a sand is insane. It's hard to describe, honestly, and I think that's the number one thing I actually learned from the YouTube videos. It's really, really hard to describe what it's actually like to ride a motorcycle on the sand. And the reason for that is, is that the feel, the way that the bike moves is like nothing else, um, especially if you're coming from riding on the road to then going straight onto the beach, but I did it. And uh, yeah, and look, the learning curve is whoop, straight up, um, very quick. I, it, was, it was an awesome weekend, had, had a you know, really good time with my friends. Um, yeah, the boys, um, they took their four-wheel drive and I took this thing and uh, yeah, look, I'll probably never go again. Look, in hindsight, going on my first ride in the sand was probably a really good idea because um, the bike moved an awful lot on the sand and I don't have any footage because I really didn't want to focus on camera gear and stuff like that for my first time out so I don't actually have any footage but uh, uh, yeah look it was really good in that after going on the sand going onto bush trails and having a little bit of loose surface was a non-event compared to what it was like going on the sand because on the sand this, this was just insane like the, the bike's like swimming all over the place. So I think I did all the right things. I had my weight back, I had the revs up. I was trying to make the front bin a little bit light. So as it moved through, it uh, did the right thing. I've got the right tires on there. I've got some Midas EO9s, EO9s, EO7s. Yep, EO9s, Midas EO9s. Oh, Jesus, it's dirty. So look, I think I did all the right things in preparing for this trip. And then when I hit the sand, it was just like a completely different world. I I, I, I'm really quite happy I haven't broken anything. And uh, when I did fall, which I did three times on that uh, little trip, I hit the sand and I survived. So how awesome is that for a learning experience? Falling off on the sand was probably the best place to do it to get, uh, you know, get that out of the way because it's nice and soft and didn't hurt myself at all. The bike, however, did suffer a couple of little issues. So little disclaimer, I'm new to riding off-road. This was, like I said, a little dip into that sort of world. On the ride, very quickly, it became apparent that, and you know, you, you probably have seen videos about this already, but uh, to get the maximum power out of this little 300 engine here, this little, you know, Ninja 300 engine borrowing that is inside this bike, you need to get the revs right up. And I'm talking about 10, 11,000 RPM. So none of that torque that you need to get out of trouble actually comes on until you're revving the bike up. All right? So to do that in, uh, you know, I, I first gear, second gear, I was revving the little guts out of this thing. And yeah, it overheated very, very quickly. That's the main issue I've had so far is that the torque comes on right at the top. So you've got to be revving this bike a lot to get the torque out of it. So when I've been on some rides with some other dual sports, they, you know, the, the torque down low that they are getting, like a VR650 and uh, it was a XT250, which, you know, was um, a bit more torquey down low than mine, I feel. Definitely with the lower revs, um, a lot more torquier. Those bikes, um, you know, you, you give it some and the front lifts and the torque hits in. But on this bike, you've got to go right up to the top and that takes time. So it's, it's revvy, it has to be revved and it's not accessible until you get the revs up. So I'm constantly, you know, 
riding a little bit of revs as I was going along. Anyway, that's just the nature of this bike. Yeah, um, so look, that was the first little adventure on the beach. Um, I actually got through the cutting really well, to the, the soft sand you gotta go through to get down to the hard sand on the beach. Got through there, actually no problems at all. The bike's dancing and stuff and just kept revving it and it just got through it and I survived and I was super happy. Got a little bit overconfident and the next minute, what happens? Blah, blah, over I go. And it was just like a split second. I don't, I don't know, I must have hit like a slightly um, softer patch and the front end sort of um, wobbled out and I lost it and just slid out on the side. It was a non-event. Um, what was really awesome, you know, Double Island is a really popular four-wheel drive track. Fell over, got up, went to get to my bike and by the time I got there, a four-wheel drive had already pulled over and this you know, gigantic Kiwi guy came over and said, hey bro, you good? And then he helped me pick up my bike and it was good. I knew that was gonna happen because you know, people are really nice, of course. They always wanna help each other um, in this situation. So that was really, really cool. Um, so yeah, and I was on my merry way again. Nothing happened, nothing broke, everything was fine on that, um, on that first drop. The second drop was on the way back after riding, I don't know how long double uh, like that um, whole foreshore uh, sand riding is, but got through some pretty hairy stuff, didn't fall over, it was all good. Um, on the way back, fell over again, almost exactly in the same spot, so maybe it was just a soft section of beach there that, um, yeah, caught me unaware, and um, over I went again. This time I was prepared a little bit differently, so I just stood the bike back up by myself, no problems. Again, nothing had broken. Then the third time that I fell over was really amateur. So I went through the soft sand, and then as I got to the last bit, there's a little section where you gotta go through the um, you know, small mangrove tree, mangrovey area, small trees area, and the sand was quite soft, and I just literally just laid it over in the tire track um, as you're exiting the beach. And during that particular drop, so the brake lever here just bent up, and uh, yeah, it was um, not the best thing to have happened. Luckily, I had some tools with me, and I just bent it back into place, and. Um, and it was actually quite good. And in a, in a way, the position of that lever now is probably in a better spot. It's a little bit higher than it was before. So the brake lever is actually quite good. Okay, so look, riding on the sand, it's um, horrendous. <laughs> Simple as that, it's horrendous. Um, I don't think I will ever take this bike on the sand again. Definitely a challenge, hard riding. The bike didn't like it as well. When I got stuck in some deeper sand, I had to rev it, rev it, it overheated. I had to turn it off. The water was coming in. I was like, this bike's going for a swim. Luckily, it didn't happen. Um, but yeah, so I don't think I'll be doing that on this again. If, no, that's probably a four-wheel driving type thing more than, than on the bike. Right, next thing. Then I took this bike over to uh, the back of Glasshouse Mountains and we did a ride um, through there. Caught this some water crossings and there's a video up on YouTube if you want to Check it out, I'll, I'll link it below. And did some water crossings and a few and a few bits and pieces that were a little bit challenging. Really enjoyed it, uh, didn't drop the bike at all. And then a uh, week after that, took the bike out again on a track from the from uh, Daybara all the way back to, up to Kilcoy and uh, through some um, bush trails. And um, really rocky trails, but um, you know, again, good fun, I really enjoyed it. And then in a very amateur kind of way, dropped the bike on a slow speed left-hander, like a really slow speed, and bent the gear selector. So, uh, yes, so very amateur. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not embarrassed, I'm not, I'm, I'm not ashamed to admit, I'm new to this sort of riding, and uh, I, all I was trying to do is bring the rib around a little bit and the bike just <laughs> went over, learning curve. Uh, overall, still very, very happy with this bike. I've really enjoyed just something different. All my riding life for the last 15 years, I've been riding road bikes. I've never been on the dirt. So this was, has been really awesome fun just to try something a bit different and uh, you know, nerve wracking, but awesome fun. All right, so what I'm going to do is link below a few separate videos that I have made about this bike. Look, all this video is just to share my sort of experience of <laughs> what it's been like to ride on sand. I don't want to discourage you from doing that if that's something you want to have a go at, but for me personally, as, uh, as fun as it was, I don't think I would do it again in a hurry. So from my perspective, look, I don't want to turn you off from riding 
on the sand, but just you know, make sure you're definitely committed to what you're about to do because it's a uh, yeah, very different type of riding, especially on this sort of motorcycle. All right, before I finish this video, I'm gonna give you a couple of quick recommendations, all right? So number one, um, you'll notice that I've changed out the mirrors on this bike. And the reason for that is, is that the factory mirrors are kind of, for me, a little bit annoying. And every time the bike has dropped, the mirrors have come loose. I know they're designed to come loose and not, you know, break your bike, break the uh, mounting points. So these replacement Koso cheapy mirrors that I've got on here really serve the purpose for what I wanted to do. And uh, yeah, look, if, if they break, I don't, I don't care. I can throw them in the bin. And I'll have the stock mirrors there ready to put back on if it comes time to sell the bike. Number two, okay, another thing that I wanted to quickly point out is if you are going to go in the sand, I know you're probably gonna hear this, but as soon as you get back, you need to wash and lubricate all the metal parts on your bike. So I literally left it for two days, two days. <laughs> and in two days, the chain and the rear sprockets just rusted, <laughs> just boom, gone, okay? The, I don't know if you can see the headers, but again, just a couple of days and yep, straight away, a little bit of rust um, from having it for two days. So um, yeah, definitely make sure you fully clean and lubricate your bike after being in the sand because I'm pretty sure that it uh, doesn't matter what sort of um, uh, quality components are being used, that salty water and that sand is going to just start eating away really, really quickly. So definitely make sure you um, clean your bike as soon as you can. Next thing is, I had initially contemplated going to do some of this off-road stuff without these tires. And I can tell you now, I would um, highly, highly, highly recommend not to do that. These provide, I feel, quite a decent amount of grip. Had I kept the stock tires on there, I don't think that would have happened. I think I would have fallen quite a few more times than I had actually uh, was able to you know, stay upright. So definitely do the tire upgrade before attempting anything off-road. Um, I have seen some videos of people taking the bike on gravel roads. No worries, but if you're going to do something a little bit more you know, challenging, then definitely highly recommend getting some rubber prior to doing anything a little bit more serious. Okay, so the final recommendation, for a 300cc parallel, this bike is somehow magically super smooth. Okay, it's really, really good. However, at 110, 100, sort of 100, 120 kilometers per hour, it is a little bit buzzy to hold that for a long time. Okay, so I would highly, highly recommend that you get one of these throttle rockers. I'll put the link below. They're you know, a knockoff from the Omni Cruise or whatever it is called. But um, I'll, I'll get the Omni Cruise, why not? Um, I'm sure it's an awesome product, but I just have the cheap knockoff version here. I'll put the link below for those items. Um, so without this, I would have had to hold the throttle on for a very long time. And I did notice that when I did do that, I did get a fair bit of vibrations through the hand and you know, my hand went numb. Common problem with um, some motorcycles. Um, so the throttle rocket saved my life, okay? It, was just, it just made the highway riding just that little bit more enjoyable. Um, just putting it on, once I got it set to the right spot, it was amazing and um, yeah, just made that, that section of the trip a lot easier and a lot more manageable than having to hold it on that whole time. So that's about it everyone. Thank you for watching to the end and um, yeah, lo loving this bike and uh, there's going to be more and more videos coming. If you're thinking about getting one of these bikes, I do recommend them, but there's a caveat with that, and that is going to be shared with you in another video. But uh, yeah, definitely um, awesome bike, loving it, but there are a few disclaimers. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.